All right, so this space is, you know, I'm, I'm kind of getting this area the way I want it. I mean, obviously there's a bunch of junk random stuff here, but I'm still walking across the shop to get, like, uh, to get things, just back and forth, messes with my workflow. This thing down here is pretty handy and it fits pretty good in this space. But the shelves are, or the, you know, the drawers are, they're small um, and they're, they're pretty narrow. Not, or not, I don't want to say narrow, they're, not, they're, they're shallow. Not a lot of depth this way. Um, and I, you know, we're not gonna get rid of this, but I'd like to make another box that fits in there better, it has some deeper drawers in it, and um, we'll probably just make them like the full width of the box. And then I can put some slots in there, you know, for like, you know, to organize it, I guess, if I've decided to later. Yeah. So we'll do that. I'd like to make some little magnetic holders for some of my smaller rules and squares and center finders and calipers and utility knife. Move some of the things that are way over on the other side of the shop that I use a lot over here, back over here. One thing is gonna be drill bits. My drill bits are way over there for the most part. I'm keeping like, you know, little packs over here. But I walk back and forth a lot to the other side for those. So I'll probably move those over here into one of these drawers. Another thing too is dust, obviously. I'm trying to get as many things as I can into some kind of storage that's covered. Particularly, you know, hand tools that I just don't want covered in dust. And then, you know, my computer down here is already covered. Um, so I need to try to enclose that or something. But it's just part of, part of the issue here. I do a lot of woodworking, particularly right now. You know, but it just doesn't, that doesn't mix well with 3D printers. Um, you know, with the laser, which is pretty well closed up now. The computer. I have a lot of, of recording stuff, too, that at some point would like to make a box to put those in. I don't know. There's a million different things that I want to do, but let's, let's make this box down here. Put some drawers in there. So we're 37 inches wide. We'll make it 36 and a half, just so we know we got clearance. We won't miss a half an inch. Thirty-six and a half. That's probably like twenty-one and five eighths. So again, we'll make it twenty-one. How deep can we go? Eighteen inches. And eighteen inches deep. That is, um, What do we say? 36 and a half by 21. Yeah. It'll be 36 and a half. 21. And, um, 18 inches deep. Yeah. Now, how deep do we want the drawers to be? What are we going to put in there? I know I want to move the drill bits over here. 
I got my I got my gloves. Hearing protection. That sort of thing in there. Ah. You know, I have these I have these earmuffs. Even though I use your plugs a lot these are just sitting out so they get covered in dust which sucks so I like to have at least one drawer that's deep enough for these to sit in there like that maybe have another drawer sitting deep enough for for these Boxes of bits to set in, like this. What else? Oh, you know what would be cool as hell? If we made a drawer to put our chargers in. Because this is another one of those things that's just sitting out and constantly covered in dust. I've got cords hanging off of the bench over there. I'm using up most of my outlets there. So, if we could have a drawer that all of my charging docks go into and then have battery storage next to it, so we're five and a half inches there. So if we have another drawer that's six inches, so I printed some of these out to store bits in, and um, they're pretty handy. Uh, but again, I've got them in a drawer over there that's stacked with all kinds of other crap, and they're two inches, just maybe a sixteenth under. Yeah, so we have another four inches left, which means we can make a drawer that's three and a half inches deep. But would end up being a total of four inches in height because of the half inch, half inch uh, plywood. So let's make a cut list here. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to have enough plywood to make all of these. I don't know. Let's clean this bench up and then we'll cut all this down. Snap a little chalky line here. That's another thing I need to move over there. Chalk line. I don't use it real often. But it just makes more sense to have it here, I think. Well, that's really faint, but it'll do the job, I suppose. Well, let's see. Do we have some uh, bracers we can put under there? I think we do. I think we do. Now this is how I like to cut full sheets. And there's any number of fancy rigs for exactly this purpose. But given my space, this works just as well, if you ask me. So we're just gonna slide some kind of stock under there of equal thickness, roughly. And uh, this will act as a 
These will act as a buffer to keep the material, lift it off the table. so that we can run our saw underneath it. And as long as our depth is set appropriately, we won't cut the table. And we don't have to try to support this board all the way down. Huh. I spent like an hour looking for these yesterday because I've lost every other pair that I have. They were on top of the door to the uh, clamp cabinet. Yeah, ridiculous. I have a big Bora um, straight edge clamp that would span this whole sheet. But it's out in the truck, it's in two pieces. And I really don't care how straight this line is well, I do, but it doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to run this to the table saw to make up the difference anyway. Set our depth here. All right, our cut's good. Now these 36 inch pieces, I am gonna have to use my bore bar here <laughs> because I don't have the rip capacity for this on my table saw. The edge of the blade on my table saw, sorry, circular saw, So, from this edge, from this edge right here, to the inner edge of the blade, it's five inches. I know that, because I measured it. So, We're going to put this five inches from our line that we've drawn. Then we're going to make sure that it's square. Five inches there. more than five inches there. Five inches. Five inches. Lock her down. We'll have to cut one more. That's my factory edge. We need this to be 20 inches. T-square. This might be something else to move. Although I don't use it a lot.
All right, 20 inches. Let's uh, run these through here, clean up the edges so everything's at least semi-square, right? Let's go through these and confirm some of our measurements. They don't have to be perfect, but I'd like them to be close to the same size. Because it will make our lives infinitely easier keeping this box square. All right, that looks good. And these don't have to be perfect, but if we're going to build a box that's square, you don't want to be off by any huge degree. All right, let's assemble this and we'll do some inside measurements on it so that we know exactly how to cut for our drawers. Let's try to get our factory edges in a similar orientation. I don't really care so much about the finishes on these, but we'll try to be consistent anyway. There are a couple of different faces on these, so we'll try to be consistent. All right, there's that one. Is this totally necessary? No, not even close. But <clears throat> I have them, so why not use them, right? All right, so what I like to do with these, set this side in, have this edge loose, just loosely tightened on there. Move this back until your edges are flush on the back, and then lock this down tight. Then you can loosen this, to move it in this orientation until everything's good and flush, and then you lock them down. And you're going to leave them locked down, but loosen the sides again. So you can slide this out, put your glue on the edge. Is that the right way to do it? I don't know. Who knows? Is there actually some magical way that you're supposed to do it. I don't know. Who cares? Just do what works, kids. Like I said, you don't even need these. Put your square up there and hold it with some clamps. Or just hang it off the edge of your shear table. Hold it by hand. Drive some nails in there. There's any number of ways. Billions, possibly. Billions of ways. Billions of permutations that will get us to the inevitable securement. Two panels at a right angle. Now this isn't very convenient for putting nails in there. I will say, it isn't a joke. There really is no such thing as too many clamps. And of all the things you should probably be investing in, clamps are it. Uh, some of them can be pretty expensive, but the amount of time they're gonna save you is worth almost any investment you're gonna to have to make in them. And uh, it all just kind of depends on the type of work you do. But they're essential for, for, for some things, you know, you know glue ups. If you're making a glue up, it's like a um, breadboard. You know, if you're gonna do a, 
something like that, you have to have them. I mean, there's just no way around it. Like a butcher block, yeah, you have to have clamps for that. You don't have to duplicate this operation like I'm doing. Um, it's just a waste of time. Just put the glue on there and then get your clamps on. But I use this quick and thick stuff a lot for these type of projects. And it's got a pretty short work time. So I like to get everything set before I attempt to glue it. Because you don't want to spend a whole bunch of time sticking around with that and have your glue set prematurely. All right, so we're gonna do the same thing, but on this side here, we'll loosen that up, we'll loosen this side up. And hopefully, just lift these off, set them here out of the way. Put our glue on and then drop it back on. going to be a lot easier said than done. Could do with another set of hands. I didn't blow any nails out that time. Now, let me see if I have enough of this eighth inch plywood to put a back on this. Oh, it's behind the damn shower. Who put this shower here? Don't mind me, I'm just raising hell. And our saw's already set at 18 inches. So we'll run it through there real quick. Well, I'm an idiot. 
That didn't need to be 18 inches, it needed to be 21, but whatever. We got one side on there. Can't believe you guys let me do that. Why didn't somebody say something? Oh, it'll be all right. It'll be fine. Everything's fine. Everything is fine. Where's my glue? Oh yeah. Could probably do for another eight or 9,000 nails in it. But I think that'll do to make this as accurate as possible. We'll go ahead and set the drawer slide in there. Yeah, let's do that. Let's set the drawer slides in, measure in between them. Thirty-four and a half. But let's um let's give it an extra sixteenth. So we say thirty-four and nine sixteenths. So we need five of them. At thirty-four and nine sixteenths. Took about 3,000 hours, but uh, we got them all cut. It actually didn't take that long, I'm exaggerating. So let's get these put together. Oh yeah, we're in good shape. All right, we're gonna do like four more of these, so I'll spare you. We'll be back. Got the drawers glued up, and we'll um, get them put in here. I don't think there's gonna be a good angle to have the camera at right now. So we'll just have to work around it. Uh, you want to space these out. I usually do about an eighth of an inch. Well, first of all, you want them to open easily. Secondly, if you're going to load these down, they're going to sag a little bit, unless you're using some super heavy duty stuff, and we're not. So an eighth of an inch should be a good space, and that's why I've got some of that eighth inch plywood in the bottom of this. A lot of these drawer slides kind of have a little lever to release them. This one has just a little flappy kind of push down on. And this will come out and this is the piece we're gonna mount on the drawer itself. You can see here you've got individual screw holes. Um, if you put it in these oblong holes here, that gives you a little play to adjust this front to back if you need to do so. But you don't have to uh, use those. And in my experience, that's the ones I usually go with because I inevitably have to do some adjustment front to back 
get the drawer to actuate cleanly. So this rail is a little bit offset from the bottom of this rail. So I usually just make a little mark here so I know where to mount it roundabout. Let's just measure that. Oh yeah, it's right here. So it's like Seven sixteenths. Yeah. So now we know we need a seven sixteenths offset. We got our square set. We're just going to run this along the bottom of the drawer. Make a little line here. Which, interestingly enough, it's pretty much the bottom of this because we used half inch material. So that's convenient as hell. Now when we mount these on here, all we got to do is just line it up, line the bottom here, flush with the top of our drawer bottom. I'm going to make my life a little easier and punch some centers in here to get these annoying screws started. So on these, they, these little oblong holes are oriented up and down and also side to side. We'll use the side to side on the others so that we can adjust on the mount itself, front to back. I usually will do the top and bottom, or sorry, the up and down oriented here, vertically oriented. So you can move this up and down if you need to. it over and do the same thing on the other side. Just have to remember to the little nub here needs to go over here instead of over here because we flipped it over. That looks good. We got full action on it and we're sitting flush there. So basically just gonna do the same process all the way up. Throw our spacers in here. And uh, yeah, just work our way up. I know my arm's blocking it. All I'm doing is finding that horizontal slot there that we talked about earlier and driving a center hole in there. our punched holes to drive these screws where they need to be. Probably should face it in the right orientation, huh? Oh, 
Punch this one in the rear. <laughs> Sorry, that was terrible. This is a little tight, but it has worked thus far. And it also shows a way that you can do this without having some specialty jig. Let's hope that was enough. Nice. A little tighter on the top than what I wanted, but it looks good. So put some drawer poles on this and eventually I'll cut some boards to face these off so it looks like a good clean drawer but I really don't care so much it's in the shop I just need it to work let's go get some drawer poles where are our drawer poles cabinet hinges here they are let's take these inside Oh, there are way too many in here. Can uh, can you guys get that door for me? No? Okay, all right. Don't worry, I got it, I got it. Okay. I'm gonna put you back on the tripod, so I got some free hands. I think, I don't know, do we need a big handle on this? So I've got these. Oh, that's way too fancy for our purposes. Actually, these are super simple. see well we have these I don't want to drill two holes got these ridiculous things yeah let's uh, let's use these we can paint them later let me see if I got a machine screw though that will fit those because I don't know If I do or not. What is this a number six, you think? I don't know, number six feels small. That's pulling out. Hmm. Let's get out the random box of machine screws. See what we have here. Well, that one fits. And it gives us like, I don't know, three eighths clearance. So that's, that should be plenty. So we just need five more like this. There's four. No. Nope. And five. All right. Oh, shit. Just broke my tote. I was holding it by one handle and dump these everywhere. All right, crisis managed. We need to uh, mark and pre-drill these holes. Try to get these roughly center. Huh. 
Okay. So we're 34 inches. Yeah, close enough. What's half of 34, 17? I'm gonna trust you guys on this one. And then we got like two and a quarter, so we'll go to one and an eighth. Somewhere in there. In my experience, it's best to have these a little oversized. So you can just slip them into the hole and not have to thread them into it. So it looks like 11 fourths. Should get us what we need. had to grease some of these up. They've been sitting out there out of the package and uh, got pretty nasty. But we open all the way so we don't have any underhang where stuff's getting trapped. lost our chisel there. Let's move some of this junk out of the way. Yeah, they open smooth all the way. So we are going to print some organizers. Um, I'm going to get a uh, surge protector. We'll mount in here somewhere. Have a cord come through the back, maybe, so that we can put our chargers down in here and our batteries, so we got them all in one place out of the way. I'm gonna make some measurements. Um, see how deep of a tray we can print to put in here for our drill bits. Maybe figure out some other things we can reorganize in there. But turned out okay, kids. All right. Got to move this thing out of the way and we'll shove it in there, see if it fits. Should have taken the drawers out before I did this, huh? That's what a thinking man would have done. But to hell with that. Nice. It's going to fit in there pretty good. And it's not going to really obstruct our ability to work on the table either. How does that look? No? Well, certainly an improvement. All right, kids. That's it for now.